Kerr Cummings here, the Cummings Law Firm. I have a business proposition for you, something to think about. If you're someone who wears suits, in particular, if you're a man who wears suits, three-piece suits, all the accessories, the bells, the whistles, trying to be the best dressed in the room like me, I have something for you. About 10 years ago, I'll just cut through it. About 10 years ago, my mentor passed away. I had to reinvent myself. I had to change the hair. I had to change the suit. Before I was casual business, didn't stand out in a room. I had to. Here's what happened. Ended up going and spending a bunch of money on some nice suits. Ended up walking in, finding, for example, nice silk handkerchief to top off the whole suit, to top off the accessories. Was real proud of myself, got home, tried the suit on, tried everything on, watched videos on how to tie the tie, how to make everything look right, how to mix and match everything. Tell you what, I went to work first day, within a half an hour, guess what happened? This little thing disappeared, gone. I was like, son of a... Watch videos on how to fold it again, prop it up, however I'm gonna prop it up to make it look nice. Guess what, within another half an hour, disappeared. I was pissed. I'm like, I pay $100 for a silk handkerchief. You're telling me that it's not gonna stay up. Fine, I'll look on the internet. I look on the internet, search and search and search, try to find something. Has to be something out there that's gonna make it stay up. Some type of something, a clip, something, something, something. Nothing, nothing that was substantive. They had the little things that you piece together or the things that are sewn on with the little silk thing on top and you poke it out until some asshole pulls it out and shows that you have a piece of cardboard stuck to your half a piece of fabric, it's garbage. Here's the deal. I happen to also be pretty artistic. I spent the next two years putting together some stuff, end up getting a patent put together right here, okay? Ended up the patent was done. I'm going, well, does it freaking work? I made a prototype, cardboard, aluminum foil, got it all together, the right measurements, different adjustments, things like that. I thought, you know what? It freaking works. Here's what happens. I end up getting a company out of San Diego. Company out of San Diego makes prototypes for me, different materials, okay? Different materials, okay? all different materials, different flexibilities, all this different stuff. So here's the bottom line. At the end of the day, send the prototypes to a bunch of people, probably over a hundred guys up and down the East Coast that I went to law school with, that I have business relationships with, all this. End up getting it, getting it sets.us, okay? That's the website I had set up for this. What I wanted was, is I wanted feedback. So I put, uh, I put on there that they need to give me the feedback. I made a real plain look and didn't want anything special or fancy. Didn't want them giving me feedback and them liking this going, oh, this is really good. I like this because, uh, because of the way it looks, even subconsciously liking the way it looks. If I get the gold or the platinum or the silver, whatever to match my accessories, don't want that. I want it flat, look like garbage, but I wanted to know whether it functionally, whether it freaking work. Guess what? All the reports came back. I got messages in, I got, not only did they fill out the reports, but I also got messages back from these guys going, Eric, this freaking works. This is fantastic. This works, send me more. So as, as courtesy, I sent them all a bunch of stuff. I sent them all a bunch of these uh, to use just like I use them. So at the end of the day, here's the deal. I'm not a manufacturer. I'm not a salesperson. I'm a lawyer, I'm a corporate lawyer. I wanna be able to sell this patent or partner with someone who wants to sell this patent. At the end of the day, I have a couple other patents that are pending right now. This one is the first one to get done. And it's the one, frankly, in my everyday life that's the most functional. I have a lot of guys that try to accessorize, in particular, that I ask, do you wear a pocket square? And they go, ah, it's the only one I don't wear because by the end of the day, the thing's shoved down and you don't see it anymore. It's kind of a waste of money. Guess what? Not a waste of money anymore. Guess what? You're gonna be the best dressed guy in the room and this stuff isn't gonna disappear over a period of time. Whether it's a half an hour or seven hours, doesn't matter. It's gonna stay. The other thing is, is with the patent, we have variations of this thing that can be made depending on, right, the pocket, the pocket itself is customarily in every suit gonna be a universal size and shape. I took that into consideration whenever I, whenever I drew this thing initially when I created it. However, the pocket square itself, these things, right, they come different fabrics. A thinner fabric is gonna slide down more easily. It's not gonna take up as much room. It's not gonna be as bulky in your pocket to hold itself up against the fabric of your suit. Other thing, the pocket squares come in different sizes. Some are smaller than this, some are bigger than this. Nonetheless, you need a pocket, you need something, a pocket prop that's gonna end up holding this thing up depending on, so if I have a great big pocket square and I have a great big prop, it's gonna push it up out too far. You have to be able to adjust it. We've taken that into account in doing the variations for this patent. Anyway, bottom line is, I'm a, I'm a lawyer. I'm not a manufacturer. 
okay? I've manufactured prototypes that work. I mean, if I paid for my, I paid myself for the patent, paid for the lawyer. I hired my own lawyers to do this down in Philadelphia. Fantastic lawyers. Patent application is fantastic. It's approved. Everything's good. I just need someone to help run with this. Someone, sell it, get rid of it, and then I want to see it explode. I want you to be the one to take it where I've only ever, I've imagined it, and it's going to go everywhere. I don't know whether Conor McGregor's line is going to get it. I don't know whether Dan Pena is going to buy it. I don't know whether, but all these guys that I look at, that I emulate, that I go, those are the guys with the drive. Those are the guys. Pennies is going out of business, or whether it's, you know, Men's Warehouse, or whether it's whatever other, you know, whatever other men's fashion organization. Nobody has this. No one has anything like this. Nothing close. Nothing close. And I have the patent on it. I have the money to back it up. I just want you guys to enjoy it. I want to enjoy it. Right? But I wanna, what's really gonna make me enjoy it is seeing everybody freaking enjoy it. And I can't do that myself because I'm too busy running everything else over here and I wanna get rid of this. But I wanna do it for a fair price. I wanna do it for a fair deal. And I wanna see, I wanna see who's gonna jump on it. So this is my offer out there initially. Uh, email address, E.E. E. Cummings, just like the poet, E.E. E. Cummings at clfdlaw.com. It's abbreviation for the word Clearfield. So clfdlaw.com, or you can call my office, schedule a time, area code 814-205-4061. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks again for tuning in, and uh, have a great, productive day tomorrow. Thanks.